Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. Are you thinking about buying the new Autel Evo drone? Watch this episode for a close first look at the Evo to help you decide if it's right for you. Before we get started, this episode is part of an entire series of videos designed to make you a better, safer drone pilot. If you want to learn about drone flying, take this opportunity to subscribe to the channel. Just click the little Cartoon Jeff on screen right now to subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post again. Now that I've had the chance to try out the Autel Evo for several flights, I wanted to offer my initial thoughts about the drone. If you've watched my channel, you know I released an episode recently that highlighted two concerns with the Evo, including the tilted horizon and a lack of rear obstacle avoidance. The tilted horizon was my biggest concern. You can see how severe the problem was on screen now. In that video I said I was very hopeful that Autel would get a firmware update release to fix the horizon issue, and they've done it. The new firmware update has made a substantial improvement to the Evo's horizon, as you can see here. It's not perfect, but it's now comparable to what you get from other drones. If you have an Evo, do your firmware update, and then be sure to calibrate the gimbal on a flat, level surface. As far as rear obstacle avoidance, I tested this feature in novice mode, and the rear obstacle avoidance actually worked. And the drone, I have it fully pegged going backwards. And in novice mode, the rear obstacle avoidance system works. This is really dumb. But it is working. While it's useless to have any obstacle avoidance that works only in the novice mode, I take heart from this. The system actually does support rear obstacle avoidance. It's just a matter of Autel incorporating the feature into modes that people actually use. Happily, there's a lot more to talk about the Evo, and most of the things are extremely positive. First, let's talk about build quality. The Evo is a solid little drone. I think the build quality is even better than the Mavic Pro. The only fragile points are the gimbal, and that's pretty much always the case with drones, and the little plastic covers over the media card slot and input ports. The covers aren't a big deal, but I wish the drone companies would come up with a more reliable solution. Otherwise, the Evo is a solid little brick that should handle the occasional bumps and thumps you may put it through. Like the Mavic Pro, the Evo's camera sits very close to the ground. You'll need to be careful when you land so the camera doesn't get damaged. I expect that someone will come up with landing gear extenders to lift the drone higher off the ground. The remote controller is also very solid. To me it's a bit small, like the controller for the Evo and most of the DJI drones. That said, my experience has primarily been with Uniques and Phantoms, which have larger controllers, so that's what I'm used to. The quality of the Evo remote controller is very good, though, and the built-in screen is extremely clear and bright. The smart device holder doesn't fit anything larger than a phone, but some people are already selling adapters to allow the use of touchpad-sized devices. Setting up the Evo was painless. Thank you Autel for not forcing me to do firmware updates, download no-fly zone data, log into your website, answer test questions. Autel made the setup process easy. My Evo came with a nice little carry case. I don't know if this is a limited time promotion or not, but it was a nice surprise. The case has room for the drone, controller, an extra battery or two. It's small, but it works well. If you don't get the Autel case, you can buy a small camera bag anywhere that will transport your Evo perfectly. The Evo flies very well, and I think its flight characteristics will get better over time. My first couple of flights I kept thinking, this thing is really twitchy, and I tried to tone it down in the settings with limited success. I now see others are complaining about occasional jitters, so this is another one of those new drone issues that will probably be fixed with a firmware update. You do have some options for adjusting speeds in your settings. I'm hoping that future upgrades to the app will offer more options for adjusting stick settings and speed. While the rear obstacle avoidance system is a matter of some controversy, forward obstacle avoidance is not. It works extremely well. I was getting warning beeps when the drone was as far as 27 feet away from an obstacle. 
The sensors picked up obstacles as small as tree branches or my camera on a tripod and stopped the drone 8 to 12 feet before a collision. The obstacle warning beep is really annoying and actually that's probably a good thing since it is, well, a warning. The Evo system uses your smart device to play these sounds. If you have the volume turned down on your smart device, you won't hear any warnings. I'm going to turn my volume all the way up. Checking the volume setting on your smart device is something to add to your Evo pre-flight checklist. Another feature that works very well is the return to home. I sent the drone out 600 feet and triggered a return, and it landed about 2 inches from where it launched. That was impressive. I've been getting flight times of 22 to 24 minutes running the battery down to low warning levels. The way the EVO handles low batteries is different than DJI drones and I'm not sure I like it. Using the default settings, when your battery hits 25%, the EVO triggers an automatic return to home which you can override. When the battery hits 15%, the EVO initiates a landing in its current position. You can change these percentages but that's not my problem with this approach. What I don't like is that your first warning of a low battery is when the EVO triggers a return to home. Once you override this, if your drone hits the next threshold for a critically low charge, your drone will attempt to land in place even if it has plenty of power to get back home. You can fend off the auto landing by pushing the left stick up and flying it back, but this is a battle. The drone will continually try to land until you let it land or you bring it down yourself. I'd like the system to give me a warning first, preferably an audible as well as visual warning, then follow up with a return to home, and finally a land in place when the battery is actually just about spent. The automatic return to home should be my second warning, not my first. One thing I like to do with a drone is to see how it holds its position over an extended hover. The Evo did pretty well, outperforming the Anafi and the Typhoon H. I think the DJI drones do a little better than the Evo on this test. I don't normally do range tests to see how far any drone will go, but I do like to see how a drone performs within the limits of what I consider responsible flying. For the Evo, I used a spotter and attempted to fly 2,000 feet away. The first time I tried it, the Evo passed 2,000 feet without any low signal warnings or video glitches. The second time, I got a weak video signal message at 1800 feet, so I stopped the test and brought it back immediately. The only time I have experienced any disruption to my video sync with the Evo was at a fly-in, where there were probably a dozen other drones buzzing all around me at the same time. Otherwise, it's been flawless. I have flown the Evo farther than 1000 feet many times, and I've never seen even a flicker in my video sync. I can't say the same about the Mavic Pro, Typhoon H, not even the Phantom 4 Pro. All that's to say I don't know, or care, how far the Evo will fly. But it flies the full visual line of sight distance as well as anything else I've flown, so the Evo gets a big thumbs up from me for its range. Overall, I'm pleased with the quality of the video I get from the Evo. In spite of its relatively wide focal length, it has very little barrel distortion even when panning down. The image is sufficiently sharp and it tends to measure white balance pretty well. For this first look, I only shot video in auto settings, which is really less auto than other drones offer. I think the Evo's auto exposure system is really more reactive than other drone cameras. It tends to fluctuate a lot as lighting conditions change, as you can see here. Ultimately, this aggressive exposure metering could end up screwing up shots, like you see here. If you plan to fly in auto mode, you'll have to keep an eye on this. However, you can have the camera recalculate exposure very simply by tapping on light and dark spots on your screen. Just tap on the screen and the camera will adjust the exposure. Of course, the Evo offers manual shooting options as well, so you can control your exposure this way. The Evo offers several autonomous flight modes. I have not tested these yet. I don't typically use these modes, but I'll check them down the road when I do a complete review. I've saved my favorite aspect of the Evo for last, and it's something I really shouldn't even have to mention. The Evo has worked flawlessly with my Samsung 8 phone. Unlike the DJI Go 4 app that has given me nothing but trouble on four different smart devices, the Autel Explorer app has been completely reliable. I can't tell you how happy I am about that. Video sync disruptions and app crashes are seriously annoying for experienced flyers. 
For new pilots, this is a huge consideration. Props to Autel for having a stable app ready to go at the time of the new drones released. More kudos to Autel for not forcing mandatory firmware updates and arbitrary no-fly zones on its customers. That about covers my first look. The Evo is a great little drone. It's solid, it flies extremely well, and it shoots very nice video. The app works flawlessly, it's easy to use, and it has lots of features. I'm hoping that Autel will continue to innovate and add more features to the app to make it even more capable down the road. I've got a bunch more videos planned for the Evo, including sample footage, a first flight tutorial, head-to-head -head comparison with the Parrot Anafi, Mavic Air, and Mavic Pro, camera settings, and more. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification button so you know when those videos are posted. Stop! Before you go, hit the subscribe button and push that like button too. Down in the description, you'll find a link to my Facebook group. Join the group and let's talk. Finally, on screen is a playlist with a whole bunch of drone videos, so click on that to see all the news, reviews, and tutorials I put together just for you. Get all that done? Okay, you can go now.